In the 1980s, there was a question on the minds of many computer graphics researchers, in an almost Goldilocks-like scenario. There was a very clear problem rising. Computers simply didn't have enough memory to accomplish the rendering tasks they were required to do. Holding a texture in memory took up a lot of space, and at a time when RAM was still expensive, this put some severe limitations on the graphical realism of computer animations. While working on Tron, Ken Perlin wasn't too fond of all these clean-looking renders, and came up with an Academy Award-winning solution. Instead of holding onto an image drawn or photographed into the computer, Perlin thought to just define an image mathematically, so the computer could calculate any point when necessary. This isn't too hard with simple patterns, but nature doesn't always have simple patterns, so Perlin developed an algorithm that made 2D patterns of random blocks. And with a little manipulation, these patterns could mimic almost any natural surface pretty realistically. So how does it work? To start, you'll need a grid. And at each intersection in the grid, put a vector pointing in a random direction with a length of 1. Then, pick whatever point you want to evaluate. Make a vector from each surrounding intersection on the grid to the point. Then find the dot product between each of the respective vectors. A dot product is basically multiplying each component of two vectors and adding it all together, which happens to be equal to the two vector lengths multiplied by the cosine of the angle between them. Put simply, if they're pointing in the same direction, it's positive. If they point away from each other, it's negative. And if they're perpendicular, it's zero. With these four numbers, the calculation is almost complete. The next step is to interpolate between each number based on how far it is from each point. Usually this is done with respect to the x-axis, resulting in two numbers, and then again with respect to the y-axis to get the final value. There's one catch though. If you just linearly interpolate between the values, the grid lines will be apparent in the output. Perlin combated this though with a smoothing function. The shape of the curve starts flat and ends flat, meaning no matter what two points it connects, the path will be smooth. Thanks to that, the output of Perlin noise doesn't have noticeable line art. So, we have a blurry picture of grayscale blocks. It looks very natural, I hear you cry. Well, that's the only the beginning of Perlin noise. Just like how an object is composed of a bunch of primitive shapes, a texture can be made up from a bunch of Perlin noise patterns. The two easiest parameters to modify are frequency and amplitude, basically the size and intensity of the blobs. By combining several of these textures together, usually with exponential increases or decreases in frequencies and amplitudes, the final texture begins to look more natural, and with some mathematical manipulation after that, specific to what you want the texture to look like, it can look like almost anything, from moon rocks, to wood, to marble, to fire. Sure, Perlin noise works well making two-dimensional textures, but the fun doesn't stop there. I mean, if it works in 2D, it should probably work in higher dimensions too, and that it does. Just take the 2D grid from before, and add another dimension. Through the same process, now between a point and eight surrounding vectors, you get a sort of 3D blob space. With a little manipulation like described earlier, you can make the space look a bit more familiar. That's right, Minecraft terrain is based on this algorithm to generate natural looking hills, valleys, and caves. What else is cool about higher dimensional Perlin noise? How about animation? That's right, just by observing individual 2D slivers of the 3D Perlin world, you can get a smoothly changing Perlin noise pattern that could be useful for something like simulating waves in the ocean. The animation you're seeing was actually animated on a graphing calculator over the course of many, many hours using this process. When you really think about it, it's amazing how such a simple pattern can be used in so many different ways to mimic so many different things in nature, and each time, because of the random vectors used in the calculation, the texture is unique. Just like snowflakes, it's incredibly unlikely, if not impossible, the two Perlin noises are going to be exactly same. That means every noise pattern, every texture those patterns make, and anything else based on Perlin noise are all unique. It's probably that fact that makes Perlin noise so useful in mimicking nature. Just like the real world, no two surfaces are the same. Unless, being that most of these random numbers are pseudo-random if they're based on the same seed, then the patterns will be the same. But I digress. <laughs>